Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Welcome, everybody. In this section of the Google Analytics course, I'm going to be going over uh, what is a little bit more of a complicated topic. Over the next couple of videos, we're going to be going over some items that require uh, a dev team. Like, unless you're familiar with web development, uh, this is a pretty technical piece of the uh, training, but it's really important. So in this particular video, we're going to be talking about how to track uh, unique users in Google Analytics. So when someone goes to your website, I have um, a local environment up right now, and then I can go to our real-time overview, and I can see that there's one person on the site right now. What Google Analytics does is it associates an anonymous ID with every single visitor on your site. So if you come down to audience and you go to user explorer, these are the anonymous IDs that Google Analytics assigns to people. So for a lot of SaaS companies, e-commerce, you know, pretty much anyone who has a website, you want to be able to track an individual, not an anonymous ID, right? I want to be able to say that this session is Danny Lambert not you know this random string here so unfortunately unlike Mixpanel and some other product analytics tools google analytics doesn't allow you to send over personally identifiable information so i can't send over an email address or uh, an address or a phone number or anything like that as an id but what you can do is send over your own unique hash and be able to see that here so if you have a product like this when someone signs in it generates a user id for them I can actually send that information over to Google Analytics and it allows me to do two things. It allows me to see an individual user's interaction versus this random anonymous ID and it also allows me to do cross-device tracking. So if I, Danny Lambert, come to the site via um, the mobile web and I log in, that's a different device and I have a different anonymous ID than on desktop. Uh, if I trigger the user identification every time someone logs in, it will then uh, merge all of these different devices with this one user ID so you can see that individual across all of their devices, all of their sessions, uh, which is not the case with an anonymous ID. So to set this up, I'll show you what steps you need to take. Uh, the first thing you want to do is go into your Google Analytics uh, view, go to admin, come to tracking info, and then you want to come down to uh, user ID. Mine's already set up, but what you'll want to do is come in and you will agree to the user ID policy. You'll click yes. Next step, it says set up the user ID. You want to allow ses session unification. Uh, so this will allow you to like merge sessions that have already happened with a unique ID. And then this is going to give you the tracking code, which we'll go into in a little bit. And the last step, is to create a view specific to user IDs. So the way that Google Analytics tracks people that you've identified with the user ID is it technically will not be available in your default view. You need to create a separate view that only shows uh, users who have been tracked. So you'll go to this create step and then all you have to do is uh, create a new view and then click this show user ID reports and click create view. I'm not gonna finish this step because I already have one enabled right here but essentially you just name it like so google analytics course view and now you always put like id view next to it you select your uh, time zone very important make sure it's the same as your other views check this on and then click create view i'm going to go ahead and hit cancel because i've already done that so now when i hop back to my dashboard what i need to be able to do is track the individual user uh, and send a snippet of code so if I hop back in here, it'll give me that code right here. If you're using GTAG, you'll use this, but since we implemented using Google Tag Manager, uh, you can send it via Google Tag Manager or you can use the universal analytics tracking code. I'm gonna show you how to do this uh, shortly in a second, but this is where you will get that information. So now I need to show you how I actually implemented it on my site. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways to do this and I'm going to add some bonus videos at the end of the course that shows you how you can do this for like inbound leads. You can also do user tracking via a data upload so you can get a list of anonymous IDs and then the IDs that they end up having and you can upload it into 
Google Analytics. That's not what we're gonna be doing in this video. I'll put that in the bonus section. And there's another option called measurement protocol, which I will also put into the bonus section. But for right now, I'm just going to cover how you can actually send these events. So here's my website. And what I set it up to do is that when a user logs in, it will add their uh, unique user ID as a query parameter. And then it will send this query parameter to Google Analytics. So I'm gonna hop into my code and show you exactly how I did that. Again, this is where it gets a bit technical. In my login route here, it checks to make sure that uh, it authenticated properly and that the user was able to log in. When it does that, it uh, returns their ID as a string right here. Request user ID to string. So all I do is say, when I go to redirect my application to the home route, add the query parameter of ID equal to their user ID in a string form. So when they come to, when it redirects this home, it just adds their uh, user ID into the query parameter. Then I go to the actual index uh, page view. This is where the page renders at that route. And at the very bottom, I do a script when the page loads. So I say window on page load, create a variable uh, from, the, um, from the URL. And then within that, save the URL parameters where it's equal to ID. So it goes in, it finds all the query parameters and it's looking for one with the name of ID, with the key value pair of ID. When it finds that, it saves it to this variable called myparam, I console.log it just so I can check. So if I come back into my other window and I inspect and I go to the console, it's logged right here. There's the user ID uh, logged. And then after it has that, it does these two things. It says GA create, and this is just creating the instance of tracking uh, for my Google Analytics account. So where you get this information is you just come into tracking code, you say GA create, and you pull this tracking code here, and you say auto. The reason I have to do this is because I have a Google Tag Manager implemented and I'm firing this via um, Universal Analytics, not Google Tag Manager or not GTag. So you just have to create this auto. It won't send a page view because I don't do a GA send page view event. It'll just initiate the tracking code. And then after that, I use the uh, code that it gave you in the user ID piece right here. So when you come back, click edit and you take this, I just drop this into here and I'm saying set the user ID equal to that parameter that I got from my URL string. So I'll log out and show you again. When the user logs in, it adds their user ID to the uh, query string and then that script just pulls this into a variable and fires this event right here, which is create and then set user ID to, uh, to that ID that I pulled from the query parameter. There's a bunch of different ways that you could do this. Like I mentioned before, this is just a way that I chose to implement it here. Uh, but this is what the ultimate outcome of doing this is. So if I'm in the Google Analytics course view and I go to the user explorer, there's no way for me to find this user ID, right? I can't go find my user, all I have is this anonymized information. But if you go to my user view, and then I go to user explorer, now I can find that individual, right? Take that ID, search for it, and click on it. And you can see that this individual user, which is me, viewed this event, viewed uh, Travel Destinations homepage, did an event play video, it's just an event that I fired, and it will show you the entire progress of that user. So if I'm firing transactions, it'll have my lifetime value in here. It'll have the amount of revenue that I've driven over time. So tracking users is very important. Uh, you can do it the way that I showed, you can do it server side. I just find this to be the easiest. But this is how you, can, one of the ways that you can set up uh, user ID tracking in Google Analytics. Uh, hopefully this is helpful again then if you want to check in the bonus material at the end of the course i'll show you how you can track lead submissions in a similar way so if you have leads coming in 
and you track their anonymous ID and you want to associate that maybe with your CRM ID or with your product, I'll show you how you can do that. I'll show you how you can do it via import and then I'll show you a different video of how you can do it via measurement protocol. Um, but this is how you track user IDs in Google Analytics. Hopefully this is helpful. And in the next video, we'll start to talk about e-commerce tracking, uh, advanced e-commerce tracking, and everything that goes with sending some more of these uh, developer-related events to Google Analytics. Thank you.